So I'm going to go through a few examples now of how we can trade size. So what I mean by trade size is how we can work out how much we might want to stake on a particular trade. So the stake, are we going to do one pound a point, ten pounds a point, five pounds a point? You know, what I find from a lot of people is, a lot of people not doing so well, uh, with all due respect to them, is that they are typically trading with this constant amount of money per point. Now, of course, the thing about trading is... You know, you know, when it comes to using the right stop losses, your stops need to be where they need to be. You shouldn't be using constant stops. So what this means is that your stop is your stop is always different. Sometimes it's 10 points, 20 points, 100 points. If you're always staking the same amount of money, then you're risking different amounts of money on each trade. Now, to take that to one step further, effectively what you're saying is by risking different amounts of money on each trade, you're more or less confident about each and every opportunity. So in other words, if some trades you do, you risk 100 quid on the trade, others you risk 200 quid, really what you're saying is you're twice as confident about the 200 quid trades as the others. It must be the case, otherwise why would you risk twice as much money? But generally speaking, people are not more or less confident, really. With all due respect, um, sometimes they'll be accused of being a little bit direct, just a bit lazy. Or maybe they just don't know what it all means. So let's look at staking an even number of pounds per point. So for every point the market moves up and down, we're going to look to do 10 pounds per point. And we're going to assume one-to-one -one risk rewards. So the amount we gain is the same as the amount at risk if we had a loss. So we can do £10 per point. So for every pip the market moves up or down, we're going to make a tenner. Okay? And we're going to look at a series of a few different trades. So the first trade is a 20-point winner. Now 10, 20 points, times by £10 a point, that's 10 times by 20, that's £200 we made on that trade. That was a winner. Okay? Equally, if that had have been a loser, it would have been a 200, point, uh, 200 quid loser. Yeah? So that's the first trade. But we're nice. We're nicely in the blue. We're making money. And then have another trade. Maybe that's the same market. I don't know. We have another 20-point winner. And we make another 200 quid on that trade. Again, risking 20 points, 10 pounds a point, times by 20. It's 200 quid on that trade, one-to-one. -one. The third trade we do is a 25-point winner. So stops are a little bit wider on that third trade but we're still doing £10 a point. So in this trade, instead of risking 200 quid on the trade, I'm now risking £250 on the trade. And I'm, But again, the trade's a winner, so I'm happy with that. So I've done three trades. Yes, I'm up 650 quid. I'm a very, very happy little boy. But then I have another trade. And I trade something really volatile, maybe sterling yen or gold or something. And my stop's quite a lot wider. But I continue to do £10 a point. So I'm, I'm running a 70-point stop loss. Now, the previous three trades are 20-point, 20-point, 25-point stops. This is a 70-point stop loss. So the distance between my entry and my stop loss in this example is 70 full points. It's quite a wide stop for day trading. So, But again, I'm still going to continue to risk £10 per point or stake £10 a point. So 70 times by 10, that's a 700 quid loser. That's bloody annoying, isn't it? Excuse my language. I'm suddenly negative on my account. I'm 50 quid down. But the problem is, I've got a 75% success rate. How on earth am I down? I've just, I'm up 75% on my trades, but my account's down. That can't be right, can it? I bet you'd love a 75% success rate. But if your risk reward's no good, that's one thing. But if you're staking the same amount per point on every trade, the danger is that if you have a loser on the more volatile markets, the markets where those stops are wider, they have a much bigger impact on your account. So in this example, whilst we may have had a 75% success rate, we end up still down. Why? Because in this example, we lost money on that wider stock market. And if you think about it, we've risked 700 quid on that trade. The other trades were only risking 200 quid. 
were we, what, three and a half times more confident of making money on that trade? Because that's really what we're implying here, aren't we? By risking the same stake every time, and by risking different amount of money in total on every trade, what we end up doing is basically saying we're more or less confident on each and every trade. Let's look. 70 times by 10 equals 700 quid. This one, 20 times by 10 equals 200 quid. That's how much is at risk, 200 quid on this trade. And that's how much of risk at this trade. Three and a half times more confident, effectively, we're saying there. But we're not. So why are we risking so much more money? Why are we risking any more money? You should be up after a 75% success rate. Because if every trade you risk 200 quid on that, you'd be up 200, 200, 200, and then you'd be down 200. Overall, you'd be up 400 quid on that. But because you've staked in an imperfect way, your potential for making profit is at risk. Why? Because if you happen to lose on a more volatile market where you have a wider stop, it's going to have a much bigger, greater impact on your trading account. And before you know it, you're losing money. Even though you've got a perfectly profitable strategy. If you're going to trade profitably, for goodness sake, make money out of it. So do yourself the best chance Stop trading an even number of pounds a point on every trade. So many people do it. But it's not in your interest to do so. Trade in a way that gives yourself the best possible chance of making money. Simple as that, really.